You are listening to the Morning Breath Podcast. Please enjoy today's show, hosted by Pastors Matt and Jessica Stahlbaum. Hey, welcome to Morning Breath, your drive time devotion. Sure to jumpstart your day. I am Matt, and this is Jessica. What is going on? Well, this is the last April recording for Morning Breath for us. Time is flying. I can't believe it's almost May. Like, what is happening? This is flying. Are you yeah. enjoying life? I love life. Good. Life is great. <laughs> Me too. It's very busy and very rewarding. And uh, I love life with you. I, I You took the words right <laughs> out of my mouth. <laughs> oh, lovely. So what's what's going on? What's up? Well, this is Morning Breath. For those who don't know, if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. We are on Monday. We're a video cast and a uh, radio show and a podcast where, wherever and however you want to find us. And uh, we take one chapter of the Bible and we read it together. And then we just speak about what God is breathing on it, hence the name Morning Breath. And we have a uh, chapter list that you can follow along with us. And even on the days we're not on the air, quote unquote, uh, you can follow along and use that as your Bible reading plan. That's what I do. I use yeah. it uh, Monday through Sunday or however you say that for my Bible reading plan. And all that info is at eccc.us or on our app called the East Coast app. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. What else is new? Oh, well, we, we are breaking ground oh, in Vieira. Yes. Yes. Okay. And uh, what what date is this today? What's the Today's date? April 26th. So, and yeah. we had our prayer service yep. at the Vieira uh, campus on the 18th. Our just kind of foundational prayer service. We're yep. going to be doing several uh, events out there to break, you know, break ground and break through, not just physically, but spiritually. And yeah. just really say, hey, the church that we're building is going to be a house of prayer. It's going to be a house of hope and uh, light to the community. But we are doing a groundbreaking ceremony on May 5th yep. at 10 a.m. Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> Cinco de Mayo. I like it. Mayo I like and saying it, yeah. <laughs> Busted. I'll help you. My six years of Spanish from school will help you say Cinco de Mayo. Si, si senorita. That's all I got, though. Like, I don't remember anything else. You don't, have to, you don't remember it unless you actually use it. I know. When I go to Spanish-speaking nations, I start speaking Spanish pretty well, quick. Because I do have a foundation of Spanish. And you're classes. forced into it there. And I've been to a lot of Spanish countries. Yeah. Spanish-speaking countries, um, rather. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So Cinco de Mayo, 10 a.m. We're going to have the ground breaking at the Vieira property where we are building a building. And it's really exciting. It's kind of surreal that it's happening. Yeah. Do you want to drive by it? It's on the corner of Vieira Boulevard and Tavistock. That's just go west on Vieira Boulevard, past Publix, and get to the stop sign where you hit Tavistock and... It's right there on the corner. That's right. So we have been doing a question of the day, and I put it out on Facebook to uh, give us some question ideas because I was running out of creativity. And Lindsay Brown, who's one of our apprentice girls here at East Coast, she sent like 10 amazingly like creative and interesting questions. So we're going to be working through her questions in the next few weeks. Um, Today's question is, which fast food restaurant has the best fries and why? (laughs) If you're not watching our video cast, Matt just made the horrible stink face because you're so above, you're a foodie and you're above fast food. No, it's just, I'm so disappointed continually with the fries <laughs> that come true. out of these restaurants that like if they were fresh, they would be pretty good. I mean, sure. it's hard to beat McDonald's fries. Like they are some of the best French fries. If when you they're get them hot and fresh salty. and hot and salted. It's hard to mess up a French fry if it's hot. Salty and crispy with the yeah. soft middle. Like, I would go Five Guys. I mean, they consistently do the best job. Um, it's not not as fast food as say like you know you want to say like Wendy's or They're Burger a King thick for me. But I love their fries. Do you like the hot spicy stuff that goes on them or just regular? Um, I could go either way, but I actually mm-hmm. like the regular ones. Yeah. I like the hot spicy stuff. But if you're gonna go traditional fast food, it's gotta be McDonald's. I think I have to agree. I mean, I kind of waffled between that and Chick Fil A. Like a waffle fry. Yes. I'm sorry. Like I like Chick Fil A, but you have to give those credit are way, for that. Those are way yes, very good. That was funny, that was and that really just funny. happened. <laughs> waffle fries. I waffled. Okay, so yeah. I they're good, but I they they need Chick Fil A sauce, so I can't say that they're good by themselves. They're thick. They are. So I think McDonald's, and I think we're agreeing. Yeah. But with the stipulations of fresh, hot, salty. Okay, good. Now I could really go for some right now. (laughs) Yeah. All right, so we're in Luke chapter 5. And what's fun is that we preached together this weekend, and we used some of the same stuff, and we did not plan that. Like, that was Mm -hmm. totally just... 
The Lord. The Lord, the Lord putting things into place. It's amazing. Yeah. All right, so there's 39 verses, and I'm going to go to... 38. Perfect. Read. What? No. <laughs> I'm going to 19. I was like, wait, am I? Okay. Luke chapter 5. Now it happened that while Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, a.k.a. the Sea of Galilee, with the people crowding all around him and listening to the word of God, that he saw two boats lying at the edge of the lake, but the fishermen had gotten out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little distance from the shore. And he sat down and began teaching the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon Peter, put out into the deep water and lower your nets for a catch of fish. Simon replied, Master, we worked hard all night to the point of exhaustion and caught nothing in our nets, but at your word, I will do as you say and lower the nets again. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were at the point of breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both of the boats with fish so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw this, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, go away from me for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all his companions were completely astounded at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon Peter. Jesus said to Simon, have no fear. From now on, you'll be catching men. After they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him, becoming his disciples, believing and trusting in him and following his example. While Jesus was in one of the cities, there came a man covered with an advanced case of leprosy. And when he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and begged him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean and well. And Jesus reached out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately the leprosy left him. Jesus ordered him to tell no one that he might happen to meet, but go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your purification, just as Moses commanded as a testimony or witness to them that this is a work of Messiah. But the news about him was spreading further and large crowds kept gathering to hear him and to be healed of their illnesses. But Jesus himself would often slip away to the wilderness and pray in seclusion. One day as he was teaching, there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting there who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was present with him to heal. Some men came carrying on a stretcher, a man who was paralyzed, and they tried to bring him in and lay him down in front of Jesus. But finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and removed some tiles to make an opening and lowered him through the tiles with his stretcher into the middle of the crowd in front of Jesus. Verse 20. When When he saw their faith, he said to him, man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who could forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is it easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Rise up and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately he rose up before them, took up what he had been lying on, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. After these things, he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, Follow me. So he left all, rose up, and followed him. Then Levi gave him a great feast in his own house. And there were a great number of tax collectors and others who sat down with them. And their scribes and Pharisees complained against his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with the tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered and said to them, Those who are well need no need of, excuse me, have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Then they said to him, Why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers and likewise those of the Pharisees, but yours eat and drink? He said to them, Can you make the the friends of a bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the day will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and they will fast in those days. Then he spoke a parable to them. No one puts a piece from a new garment on an old one. Otherwise, the new makes a tear. And also the piece that was taken out of the new does not match the old. And no one puts a new wine skin, new wine in old wineskins, or else the new wine will burst the wineskins and be spilled, and the wineskins will be ruined. But the new wine must be put into new wineskins, and both are preserved. And no one, having drunk old wine, immediately desires new, for he says, the, the old, old is better. better. 
Amen. 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 Good. So first thing I thought of when I read this chapter was um, this whole story is told in, I forget which episode of season one of The Chosen, which we've talked about on past episodes, but I could just see this playing out because of that. Like it really brought it to life for me. Plus the fact that we have had the opportunity and privilege to go to Israel. So to be able to visualize the Sea of Galilee and the shore and like how massive it is and all of this. So I thought that was really cool. And again, I would recommend if you haven't seen The Chosen, totally worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, really good. Um, so what uh, what I, I think I'd like to talk about is um, verse five, when Jesus says, hey, uh, you know, you guys catch anything over there? And and he's like, hey, launch your net, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon said, man, we've been, we've been fishing all night and haven't caught anything. And uh, I want to talk about the combination of grit and grace. So grit is, what is grit? Grit is not necessarily being strong. It's more like being tough. It's more um, like the effort it takes to develop your skills. Mm -hmm. It's the effort it takes to develop your talents into skills and your skills into success. So that's what grit is. It's the effort in the factor of, of that, you know, the math problem is talents times effort equals skills. Skills times effort equals success. And the common denominator in there is effort. It's grit. It's toughness. It's the ability to fish all night. But when you have grit without grace, what you end up with is sometimes you get fish, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you fish all night and you catch a few. Sometimes you catch none and uh, you end up being tired. And now think of that. Um, and you can't really even predict like what's going to happen with what you catch. And so put that into like a marriage, for instance. We talked about that this weekend. You put grit into a marriage and you have a lot of hard work and a lot of effort, but you're missing a key factor. You're missing the grace. You're missing the joy. You're missing the life. And you just, you just have a tired marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of work. There's not a lot of joy. Um, but now when Jesus said, hey, put your nets out into the deep, go again, they said, at your word, I will. When they did, they literally moved the net over six feet, just like from here to there, mm. dropped the nets down, Basically, the distance of social distancing, mm -hmm. six feet. Interesting. Um, drop the net, and all of a sudden, they just, they slay it. I mean, they've got boats full. Like, yeah. boats came over because their nets were breaking. So now you have grit plus the grace of Jesus' word yep. in the right location and the things that you need uh, to actually take your hard work and turn it into, take your 10 fish and turn those 10 fish into a hundred fish, right? When you have the word of God and, or excuse me, the grace of God, you take the work and you add it to the grace. And now your marriage is lifted up because you're not just doing the work in the world's way, um, but you're doing it in God's way in your marriage. Um, also, you can actually give each other grace in marriage too. There's lots of ways to do that, to give. I don't just need grace from God, but I need your grace. Mm -hmm. I need your grit. I need your grace. You need my grit and you need my grace. And I need the reminder that I can give you grace, Yeah. right? And, mm -hmm. and vice versa. And I think too, when you hear grit and grace, you could automatically think he's grit, I'm grace. But that's not true at all. No. Like we both need. We both bring grit. Yeah. We both bring toughness. Yes. We both bring hard work and yep. effort and we both bring grace. Yep, it's true. I liked verse five as well. And I, I came at it from imagine the amount of frustration and exhaustion that he was feeling. And he expresses it, yet still he chooses to obey. And I think a lot of things, I know a lot of things that God asks us to do doesn't make sense in our natural minds. And we can tell Jesus how we feel about it. Like he didn't have any trouble telling Jesus how he felt about it, but then obedience is a must. And I think back to when COVID first became a thing, March of 2020 in our area. And I remember feeling a microscopic moment of temptation to fear of how are we going to, we have to close our church. Like, how are we going to survive? How are we going to, um, how are we going to survive? And immediately I just felt faith rise up in me. And I thought, and I said out loud to you and many others, when, if people understand, truly understand what tithing is, 
that it's obedience to God, that it's just doing what he says, that it's a supernatural thing, that giving God 10% doesn't make sense in the natural, that he would then do more with the 90% left over than we ever could have done with the whole 100 had we kept it, that being obedient in that way, if people understand that, they will know that now in crisis, in this time, when things are uncertain in the natural, it would be the worst time to stop tithing, to stop giving. And I know for us, we were like never even tempted to stop giving because we know God, we have seen the faithfulness of God. We have seen miracles in our financial lives. We have seen him do more with the 90% than we could have ever done with 100%. We look at, we're like, how, how, how did this happen? There's no way. Like in that moment, it's like, yes, you can say, man, this is scary. I might've lost my job. Or we had to close our church, but we will obey and we will obey. And continue to obey. And then look at verse six, it says the reward of obedience for in this, in, in this moment was actually instantaneous. And often it just isn't. Often it's like you, you be faithful and God is faithful to you. But it says, when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were at the point of breaking. Like that was the immediate reward. And then the result of that was verses nine and 10. For he, Simon Peter, and all his companions were completely astounded at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with him. And I think when we are obedient, God looks at our lives. God looks at us, or people, sorry, people look at our lives from the outside and they see God's faithfulness and his hand on our lives. And it actually speaks to other people. Like our obedience produces things that are able to be seen physically to other people, which then points people to God. If we're giving credit where credit is due, right? Yeah. You know, I want to go back. You were talking about tithing Mm -hmm. um, during COVID, which, you know, it's like, well, what's going to happen to the economy? What's going to happen to uh, people giving, you know, at church? What's going to happen to our jobs? What's going to happen to the stock market? All those things, right? So I'll just tell you kind of what we did as a church is we cut expenses and ramped up generosity. So what we did is we buckled down and said, what are we doing right now that is unnecessary? Like, and we kind of did like a red, yellow, green. Like green, we go. Yellow, we consider cutting. Red, we cut. And we just marked every expense that we had in the church. And lots of greens, lots of yellow, lots of reds where we're like, Unnecessary, unnecessary, Like unnecessary. goldfish for kids' church. We weren't open, so we we're like, we're not buying that right now, right? Like little, like down to the things like that. Duplicate um, Spotify accounts for different departments. We only need one. We don't need to. Granular level. Like yeah. what don't we need right now in this season? What didn't we really need but didn't ever really look at that well? Mm-hmm. Um, and we did that. And we do that often. Don't get me wrong. It's not like we have just a bunch of superfluous spending going on out there. But things, you know, you end up with three Zoom accounts when you only needed one because three different departments opened it, whatever. And uh, so we just cut, 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 cut. And then we didn't cut our giving. In fact, we said weekly, we're going to be generous to the community. Mm-hmm. And we are going to add value in a season of the famine and the wilderness. Yep, That's what... 2020 and even for some 2021 is it's a perceived famine and it's a season of wilderness which is a sense of lostness a lost of like we're lost in our way we Mm -hmm. don't know what ways forward what ways you know back whatever we're we're lost we're confused so we said we're going to add value into people's lives that's our number one job our number one thing generous words the word worship hope healing all of that full full force full speed ahead. And I got to tell you, um, it's been very helpful to us because we have not lacked. We haven't suffered. Things haven't been easy, but God's taken care of all of our needs according Mm -hmm. to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And I think I've I've talked to business owners and I, when we were kind of COVID, what do we do? We're going to shut our business down, all of this and all these things. And it's just like, how about this? How can your business add value in this critical moment? And wait, we're not shutting our business down. We're going to refire our business to actually help the needs of people in this moment. Mm -hmm. What are people trying to accomplish right now? We're going to lean into that. We're going to pivot. Yeah. 
Pivot's an incredible leadership word. It's a word where you go, I don't know what to do right now. It was like a daily word for a yeah. while. <laughs> we're going to pivot today. Oh, we're going to pivot tomorrow. We're going to pivot the next I day. I called it detours at the time. Like, yeah. we're going to take detours. We, we want to go forward, but we can't go that way. Destination is still the same. How yep. are we going to get there? God, right. this is not a surprise to God. Yeah. So adding value is you're giving something. You're giving. Mm -hmm. When you add value, you give. Sometimes you give a product and people actually pay for it. Sometimes you give um, friendship to people and you you are paid back with connection and relationship and and community. Mm -hmm. But anytime you give, you will get a return in your life. It's just how, that's just how it works. God will give back to you. But when you give in a season of famine, yeah. That is showing trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Also, when you don't give in a season of famine and you give, guess what you're preparing? Fruit in the future famines. How many times did we say, I am so thankful that however many years ago, we set up a Dave Ramsey budget and we had, you know, an emergency fund and all of these things. Like when we were doing that, I mean, no one ever actually anticipated this, right? But yeah, you are, you are producing, you are planting seed for your future. There's never a bad time to start putting these spiritual principles into your life. If you've never given anything before, I just challenge you to, to take God at his word. Like it said, he says in his own word, test me and I will prove myself to you. He is so faithful. And I am passionate about tithing specifically because personally we've, you know, experienced it, right? It's experiential that I can speak to it with passion and conviction, um, not something I haven't done, right? But also I just, I know that it's the key to breakthrough. It is the key to breakthrough. It is like you are hitting a wall in any area of your life. You give God control of that part of your life. It will impact your whole life. Mm-hmm. It's not just your finances. It, it, it is indicative of the posture of your heart, when you're able to put God first in your finances and it, it bleeds out in a good way into everything else. <laughs> yeah, I remember a season for us, it was super, super hard. I mean, it was like financially, it, we were just kind of going through disaster. It was uh, right around 2010 and we purchased a house with every penny that we have and we take every penny that we have and we cash flow um, renovations and mm-hmm. it needed a lot of renovations. I spent personally 400 hours renovating that house. A cat lived in a hole behind the toilet of the wall of this house. Okay. <laughs> so this is not like, oh, it needed a new backsplash in the kitchen. No, it needed a cat taken out of the wall <laughs> and the wall closed up. <laughs> yeah. That's just the beginning. I spent 400 hours. Jessica actually calculated the hours. I spent 400 oh and I had 400 hours of help. Okay. That was amazing. My goodness. So then it's like we did it. We were moving in and the air conditioner broke. I forgot about that. And it was like, what are we going to do? Well, how much money do we have in the bank? Like literally we just spent our last penny. Yeah. Like we literally had just spent our last penny to move into this house. And we had $4,000 in our bank account. And I, to this day, I still have no idea why there was that money in there. I mean, I don't know. Like there's no, it was like no logical explanation. And I'm just like, Lord, thank you. Yeah. Like, I mean, we gave, we gave our blood, sweat and tears into this. We never, you know, through the, through the entire time. Right. That was the grit. And then the grace was God just being like, I got you. I got you. That's what he does. There were other times where, I mean, first married and you're like, our washing machine's broken. And I remember, I think it was my dad and mom showed up with the washing machine. Mm -hmm. They're like, hey, we heard your washing machine broke. Yeah. Here you go. And they had bought us one at wherever, Scratch and Dent, or us or whatever. It was the best washing machine I've ever had. Those new ones that are front loaders and all that stuff, So they're just all talk. Yeah. (laughs) They don't make them like they used to, okay? They don't, man. Tupperware, Can you imagine we say that? But like when we were a kid, people used to say that. Oh, How gosh. good were the things back in the day? They must have been they must like, have been amazing. <laughs> what were the things? But the point, I think the point that you're making is like at God's word, you obey. Yeah. Like, and when it's hard, you obey. Mm-hmm. And when it's easy, you obey so mm-hmm. that when it's hard, you have planted seeds in the ground. Yeah. And you have harvest. Yep. You want success. 
add value, add value into your relationships, add value to the people around you. Keep giving, be generous, add value to your church, be generous towards what the church is doing and, and how the church is moving forward. I mean, mm-hmm. we're in a building project, uh, building a, a building of year and we're raising, you know, one and a half million dollars in this process and people are giving, mm-hmm. people are buying in, people are going for it and they have been for years. And yep. it's like together we're literally planting a building in a swamp hole in Vieira. Yep. Like nothing's ever been built on that piece of land. That's right. And the only way that it's happening is people have been adding value. And guess what? The church going there is adding value. It creates this cycle of growth in your life. Yep. That's really good. I want to touch on verse 12 as we wrap up here, uh, 12 and 13. It's when Jesus uh, was in one of the cities and there came a man covered with leprosy. And when he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and begged him saying, Lord, if you're willing. First, I'm like, how did he know who he was? I want to know that. Like, I don't think we can know this from that, but I just want to know how he recognized him, especially because there was no like social media then or like even pictures or like what? I don't know. Well, anyway. Are, but these are small areas. Yeah, you know? that's true. I mean, Nazareth, just for it, be reference is, was like, two to three acres yeah. in size so, and maybe So maybe they'd seen each other max. around. So Oops. Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean and well. And Jesus reached out his hand and touched him saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And I just felt like someone is listening today at some point, whenever you see this, whether it's on this day or another day, whenever you see it on cyberspace and you need to know that God is willing. Like you may have something in your life that you're just like, I don't, I don't think God would do this for me. I don't think he's willing. Well, this leper came to him and said, he had so much faith in him. It's like, you can do this, but will you? And I just want to encourage you that Jesus can and he will. He is willing. So if that needs to be your prayer to him, if you are willing, Lord, help me in this. Heal me, touch me, free me, whatever it is. I just want to encourage you to to take the risk, to take the leap. It's not a risk. It's it's faith. Put your faith out there and and the Lord is willing and he loves you. That's so good. Thanks for listening to Morning Breath. We'll see you next week. Bye. We hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Morning Breath podcast. If you did, we would love for you to give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. To follow along with our daily chapter list and for quick access to East Coast podcasts, events, and more, download the East Coast app. It's the best way to stay connected with everything East Coast. We would also love for you to join our online community. Just search for East Coast Christian Center on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks again for listening to the Morning Breath podcast.